Welcome back to the videos, and we're going to start our first still life today. I had you take pictures in the class so you can work from your phone, but you can also work from the lab book. We're going to do our first painting in black and white. It has no color, and we use the term achromatic for a black and white painting. No, no color. Achromatic. And uh, so you can draw from here, or if you have it on your phone, you can pull it up and be able to work um, this way. My phone happens to have a um, focus and a range that exaggerates my shapes just a little bit. This photograph here was taken with a different camera where I was zooming in. You can also combine the two. But what you want to always be sure to do is zoom in enough that you are using the majority of the space for your object and that you're able to see three different values in the wall, in the floor, in the other wall, and in the object. So just like your digital studies, you'll have 12 values uh, overall. Hopefully your digital studies helped you with this. And then also it could be that some of the sketching that you did helped with that. If you remember, I did a uh, sketching class and these videos are also on the uh, site. So if I go a little quickly through the sketch and you're having trouble, uh, just go back to that sketching video and I'll walk you through that part. You can do your sketch and then come back to this video for the part that's more focused on the mixing of the color and painting. Okay, so we can get started. And the first thing I want to do is I'm going to do my drawing and I want to focus in generally, make sure your object's about as big as your fist. So that's one measure that I use for a composition about this size. You'll be doing your drawing on the page that says achromatic. And here's a student example. So I'm going to loosely draw in about where the floor and the wall meets and about where the wall and the wall meets and then also where my object would be. Floor up. This line and the line above it are going to be parallel. This line and the line above it are going to be parallel. This line and the line across will be parallel. And this line and the line across will be parallel. So you're going to. I'm drawing lightly, which might be hard to see. but it won't show up through the paint underneath. If you like to draw very dark, you might just want to come back with an eraser and lighten it up just a little bit. The thing I'm missing is the cast shadow. That will also give me two more values on the floor and on the wall. And now I want to make sure that I can see three values everywhere. So I definitely will have three values for the object got two so far for the floor, but I think I'm going to have it be just a little bit lighter where the spotlight is hitting the center, and then it'll be a little bit darker here. The same here with the wall. I think it's going to be a little bit lighter in this area, a little bit darker here, and then over here on the uh, right side of the wall, it looks like it's a little bit darker here, and it's a little bit lighter as we get up above. We can compare the book to the image that you have on your phone. And you can see that just a little bit where it's a little bit darker at the top than it is at the side. And on this side over here, it's a little bit darker at the top than it is down here. So that's what I'm going for. Okay, so to get started with the values, I'm gonna set my book to the side. I'm gonna get my black and my white out. And just like when we were mixing the value study, we'll be looking for these different values in this painting. So one of the things that we said was that the lightest area really wasn't going to be white. The lightest area was really going to be more of a light gray. And also that the darkest area might not be a black, but the darkest area might be a very dark gray. 
So it turns out that there's no black or white that is a solid value in this painting. It's all going to be mixtures of gray that are in between. So I've got my drawing example here and I'm going to just put it up here to the side and I'm going to mix up my first grays and those are going to be the lightest grays that are in this area. Just pepper flakes of black. So this is what I'm thinking would be the value of the gray up at the top. And this is about a number one or two gray. If you can see, the value of the top of the block is just a little bit lighter than the lightest areas that are over on this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of white to this light gray because I know they have to stand apart from each other. If they're painted the exact same color, they'll blend in. So there has to be contrast here. So I'm going to add a little bit of white to get the top. We have our side, our top. Next lightest areas are in here, so I'll add a little black and get darker as I come down. this value here to be just a little bit darker so that this area up in the top looks like it's outside of the spotlight.
three out of my 12 values. I'm a quarter of the way done. If we keep in the process of going a little bit darker each time, my next darkest value should be this area, which is very close to this one right here. When I look at what my digital studies told me, here's the side, and here's the floor, and they look very close. In fact, the numbers say that they are both exactly the same value. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make them just a little bit different. I'm going to make since there's some dark in here, I want to make this a little bit darker than the floor. So that was my last value. This one's just a little bit darker than that. And so this is gonna go here. And then a lighter version of that will go to here on the floor. So if I would have painted them both the exact same, the floor would have been this color and we wouldn't see this edge on here. So I definitely have to make that just a little bit lighter. So this is lighter. And while I'm there, I'm going to make the darker edge that's down here below that's outside of the light of the spotlight.
So this is darker. Let's see how it com compares to this value here. Not quite as dark as what's in the book. But again, we're not trying to paint things perfectly exactly the way we see them. It's all right for it to be adjusted a little bit. So this is the shadow. So this might be close to this value right here, but I believe it's a step darker. So I believe that the shadow that's in here is darker than that. So I'm gonna go one step darker here. It's gonna to have to be a little bit lighter over here on this wall, and it's gonna to have to be a little bit darker right in here. So there's the challenge to not go to black, but be able to see three different values right in here when you're already this dark with your paint. So one step darker. this shadow on the wall. One step darker to be the shadow on the floor. very hard to see and I hope that the camera shows this but there's just a very subtle difference between the floor and the wall and that's crucial you don't want to have that cast shadow be the exact same as it runs up a light wall so one step darker for the block itself
And now I just have these three values to have in here. So I'm gonna go dark, lighter, lightest. concerned that this might be the same value as the side. This needs to be darker than the side. So let me paint it and see how it looks. Yeah, I think that that will be fine. Next area will be just a little bit lighter. My last value is going to be this lighter value that's just up above. It's just a little bit of white paint. This is my last mixture, so I'm just going to scrape it right up. And we've just completed our first still life. So this is the achromatic still life, no color. We don't try to blend everything perfectly together. As you can see, there's a posterized filter on here, so it's adjusted some of the colors just slightly. But what we see is we've got a light top, 
dark side, medium side, light to dark with a cast shadow, light, dark with a cast shadow, and dark moving up to lighter. So we have 12 total. If you have 12 on yours, that's a passing assignment. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. All right, I'll see you in the next video.